Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. How are we doing? Thanks for coming in. Got another live stream planned. Another blind flight. Been doing nothing but blind flights, and I am loving it. Hope you guys are all doing well. Thanks for coming hanging out. A lot of people in chat early. Christopher, David, Wheels, how you doing, brother? Hope everything's going well, Wheels. Jason, thank you for being here, man. For those of you that don't know, Jason is taking the night off tonight. Uh, I know, I know. Poor guy has to have a little time off. So he's in New York right now. New York! He's in New York. Uh, have fun, Jason. Hope you're doing something fun, not just working or something. So, Jay Warren was here early. Whiskey Central. Brian Butler. Uh, Brian, we're breaking out your whiskey tonight, brother. Brian was kind enough to send me Bone Snapper Straight Rye Single Barrel. Now, this is MGP. Six and a half years and 60%. So, I am very excited. Very, very excited to try this because... Me and Cast Strength MGP, something special usually. I'm going to go ahead and pour it right now. Let it open up a little bit. Will Henderson in the house. Mike Myers, how you doing? One lost cause. Um, yeah, my hair is like really poofy right now. It gets to this awkward length where it gets really long and poofy. And my wife's like, you need to style your hair before we went live. I was like, nah, nobody cares. You know, no one cares about my hair. It's all about the whiskey. You know, that's all it's about. I don't care if I look presentable. Woo! Baby, I'm gonna let that open up a little bit. 60%, but boy, does that smell nice. Nick Foles, how you doing? Trev Wilson, you were also here early, brother. Trev's always rocking the pregame squad. Greer Crabtree, Ryan Ainge, good to see ya. Now, this flight tonight was provided by Ryan, so I... I don't know. He said these are all good whiskeys. That's really the only hint he gave me. So it could be literally anything. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be fun, though, either way. Will already with the $4.99 Super Chat haircut fun. Honestly, true. True. <laughs> it gets so disgusting. Look at this. Ah! Once I start sweating after all this, this whiskey, too, it'll get even worse. Ashley Campbell, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. We're going to have a good night. So I haven't decided yet whether I want to guess age proof and price like we did last stream. We'll see how I'm feeling. You know, we'll see how I'm feeling. I would be just most happy if I could identify what maybe it is. Like if, if it's a pick of some type or whatever, you know, because I have no idea. This could be all bottom shelf stuff, top shelf stuff. I really don't know. Patrick Fulmer, how you doing? Brian says, this is so good. Love MGP, one of my favorites. I know. And honestly, I've heard a lot about Bone Snapper in general um i just had never had it so this is my first time let's go ahead and give it a sip and see what we think here after about five minutes i'm opening up garrett high scale how you doing ah, whew, that's got some rye punch man holy cow mm. Mm. that color that's some whiskey porn right there for you mm. that is good that that actually drinks to me older than five and a half years. I think that cast drink makes all the difference. Guy Davis in the house. How you doing? He's got some Old Forester 100. Nice. Excellent choice. Cletus. Good to see you, Cletus. Yep. Seeing it all of a sudden. I've never even seen it here. Um, but if you can get a sink. This, is, this was a single barrel store pick um, that he was able to get. And it's cast strength. And it is good so far. Um, Ryan says, is there a way for me to share the key with everyone without letting you see it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, most people on here though are part of the Bourbon Junkies group, so I'm sure they wouldn't mind if you posted the key <laughs> in the Bourbon Junkies group and just put on their key for the live stream. I'm sure Dan and Sean wouldn't care. Oh yeah, someone can make a Google Doc, that, that'd be fine. Um, I can't make it because I'm, I don't have my keyboard right here, but... Trev or Christopher David, anyone can make a Google Doc and just do that too. That way um, you can share the link to the Google Doc on stream and I can't click it anyway, so. That'll work. Andrew Spurrell, good to see you. Drink Pro says, local store heads and bone snapper aged in 23 gallon barrels. Smaller, huh? Nice. Nice. This is good. Hmm. This is probably 
That's a lot of rye. I'm curious what mash bill this is. Brian, if you know what mash bill this is from MGP, I'd be curious to know because this is a lot of rye. Lot of rye. Hmm. I'm going to get these poured. Um, Ryan, I like I said, I don't know what's in these anyway, but I, just in case there's some high proof stuff, I'll go ahead and pour. I'm a sample hoarder, so I've got hun a couple hundred probably sample bottles open here. Open that I, um, I just kept half a sample left because... I'm worried I'm gonna to want to drink it again, so <laughs> so I try not to. You you all understand. I'm sure you're the same way with samples, right? I'm not the only one. Tell me I'm not the only one, please. Validate me. Don or pass whiskey. How you doing? Good to see you. Ah, I'll tell you what. A couple of these so far, just looking at them, have some nice color. Uh, let me just say one thing too. My wife doesn't even know about this yet, but Brian hooked up the M and M's too. This is for Mrs. Bourbon Sane. She is a freak when it comes to chocolate. Thank you, brother. Got to keep the wife happy. Got to keep her happy. 95.5, that makes perfect sense because that's that's what it seems like. It's it's high proof stuff for sure. Hope you all are doing well today. You guys got something poured already or not? Let me know what you have poured. <laughs> there she is, yep. There's your peanut M&Ms. Actually, they're peanut butter and caramel. Her two favorite things. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Ron's Wood Turning Chef, how you doing? Knob Creek Rye, sticking on the rye, the rye train. I like it. I like it. M&M's and whiskey. There really is not a better pairing. No. Reese's and uh, Jim Beam on Valentine's Day. Not too bad, though. There you go, cleaning the house. Yep, chores first, reward yourself with whiskey afterward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. This is good. This bone snapper is good stuff. I am just, um, I think I just, I like MGP too much. You know, they're, they're really missing, they were, I should say, missing the ball by not putting out their own label. If they have, I, I don't know anything about who's their, like, master distiller or whatever, but just their products alone, just making their own brand stuff. There's potential there. A lot of people use it, so. Spice up a bourbon meal with brats and hot Chinese mustard to dip. Woo, light you up. <laughs> Guy says. Bottled and Bond, how you doing? Says, little Wild Turkey 101, splash of peanut butter whiskey. Ooh, peanut butter whiskey. You know, Wild Turkey 101 actually has some peanut qualities already. You know, it really does to me, so. Richard Walton, how you doing? Um, learned so much. Haven't you've never tried rye? Okay, um, go tomorrow or now if it's not too late. Get yourself Old Forester rye. That's that's the rye I would start with. That's so easy to transition from bourbon to rye with that. Um, everyone else, tell Richard what else, what other rye you would recommend as a starter. I did an episode on top five starter rye or ryes to start, so you can check that out too if you want, but. Pick up the Remus Repeal Batch. I I've tried it, thanks to uh, Christopher David. That stuff's good. I mean, that's just it's just classic MGP. You know, it really is. Pikesville, yes. Um, Richard, if you like a little bit higher proof already, grab yourself a Pikesville. Sagamore is another excellent um, recommendation, too. Just price is an issue with Sagamore. But they put out a really, really good whiskey. Um, they're starting to mix their own in now, but that was always MGP as well before. I, I really... The Sagamore cast strength really growing on me and they've got awesome uh finishes they do too so mm. Mm. can't put that down knob creek also a good one also a good one baby says if you can find it brad yep which is um it's been popping up more for me here like i've had a couple places actually around here maybe it's because of covid but i've been able to get it if i want to Daniel Brown says Rittenhouse, excellent recommendation, along with, um, uh, who, did, who else did I just read? Oh, Mike. Mike says the Knob Creek, yes. Yep. All good stuff, for sure. We'll put our bone snapper up here. I'm still going to, I think, finish this, because this is really good. It is warming me up, though. Hair's going to get even poofier soon. Get the, get, get the whiskey sweats going. New Riff Rye, also a good choice, you know. 
there's a lot of rye that can get away with a little bit younger age, like four years. Four and six is kind of the sweet spot. Sazerac is six. Knob Creek's probably about five. The single barrel picks are about six years usually. So, um, you know, rye, they say, tends to age faster than bourbon does. So you can get, you know, sometimes get away with a little bit younger rye. MGP rye. Will it for your rye is good. That is also cast strength, which we love. Hmm. All right. Save that for the end of the stream. All right. Let's throw the caps on these. We'll work our way. We'll see if that bone snapper just ruined my entire palate for the night. It's very possible. Very possible. Anthony, how you doing? Good to see you. He's got some rare breed rye. Oh, you know, just showed up here. Um, I haven't even picked up a bottle yet, though. It's been crazy. Crazy. Kilco, how you doing? Yep. Get it all. Get it all. All right, let me see. I do have a page. One through five, ready to go. Uh, Ian Hall says, what is MG or what is an MGP rye? Um, bullet is actually 95.5 MGP rye. But if you're going to get a bullet rye, I would get the bullet 12 year rye. Um, it's just better. It's more expensive, you know, but it's, it's better. Um, as we were just talking about the bone snapper rye, MGP rye, there's a lot of single barrel like store picks out there that do MGP rye. Um, what was it? Oh, the Senator. I was recently introduced from a buddy of mine locally to the, the Senator rye. They have like three of them. The Senator, I can't remember the other ones, but it's a barrel proof rye about six years again. That's one of the, the best ryes. Like it, it honestly almost held up to Thomas H. Handy when we tried it side by side. Like it was, it was close. So if you can find the Senator rye at the, at a decent price, really, really good. Wildlife and whiskey. How you doing? Good to see you. All right, we'll start with one here. Clear the palette again. Oh, Michter's rye is very good too. Yeah, that's another one. They use a low entry proof. So, you know, you get a more, like I, I think a better mouth feel, um, kind of a more rich flavor on the palate because of that. Dick, yeah, that's true. Dickel is also MGP rye. They just pour it through an ash pile. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They use that filtering process. Yep. That's the Tennessee, Tennessee process. Hmm. I'm getting some, some alcohol burn on this one. Might have to let this open up a little bit more. I'm getting some alcohol burn. Good Lord. I got some serious sweat going. <sighs> Cast strength, guys. Oh, Rossville Union, yes. Completely forgot that's MGP's um, MGP's rye, which is also very good. The cast ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this has got some heat. Got some heat on it. No, Patrick, that's another really good one too. High West Double Rye, another one that's MGP rye. Up. Yep. This is this. I think this is high rye as well, or maybe just high proof or both. Whiskey sweats are real, and I got two like lights shining on me too, so doesn't help. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> I I really think that bone snapper screwed up my palate already because that's definitely hot. Like it's definitely got some heat. But I'm, I am getting a lot of rye kick, too. They honestly taste kind of similar. Maybe my palate's just shot, but they do. They kind of taste similar. Might even be a, a rye whiskey, honestly. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I've never gotten used to the gotta record a video, let me blind myself with the light when I do it. I know. That's why I, I I apologize. I don't look at the camera that much when I do live streams, especially because there's a light directly behind it. And it's like, if I look at the camera, it's just like a shadow and it just hurts my eyes so bad. But yep, had the Lost Monarch. Pretty good stuff. Mm. That wasn't as hot. Mm. 
Now, it wasn't as hot. I still, I still get the rye tingle on the center of the back of the palate, though. Still coming through, but that's actually got a lot of bourbon notes, too. So that very well could be a bourbon. One is already confusing me here. So we may not be uh, picking age proven price tonight. We'll see. Were, um, were you guys able to share the key at all? I'm curious. I haven't seen any link or anything, so I was just wondering. Ooh, I don't mind the nose on this one, though. This smells nice and rich. Hmm. Heat, though. Still some heat. Oh, man. Watching him. His thumbnails he makes, I'm always so excited for the live stream <laughs> right after me. I always look at the clock and I'm like, oh, we got to wrap up. We always have to wrap up right before. We go a little long tonight, not a huge deal. Okay, this is, okay, as this opened up a little more, I'm getting graininess. So I think this is going to be a little bit younger. Um, it's almost like a farminess. This is what happens. I haven't, I have not drank in like a week. So <laughs> that's why I'm sweating so much too. Uh, when I say farminess, I mean, I, I guess kind of like a youthful corn. That's what, I, what I'm describing. Hmm. Kind of reminded me of the nose of um, Woodenville, like Woodenville pot still. You know, it's it's kind of that like whipped vanilla, but with like a sawdust quality almost. Mark Wilson, how you doing from Detroit? Cheers, brother, right around the corner. Thanks for coming in. It's a good night for some whiskey. Good night for whiskey. I have not had the um, the Woodenville rye, only the bourbon actually. So. Cletus says, smash that like button. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Turner, $20 super chat just because. Like a boss. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. Completely unnecessary, but hey, thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. It really means a lot. Really means a lot. You're the man. <sighs> All right, let's give this one a sip. Yeah, I think that's probably still a little bit on the younger side, you know. It doesn't taste like completely grainy or completely ethanol forward or anything like that. Um, Timothy, <laughs> I love that. What's up, Insaniacs from Long Island? Insaniacs, I like that. I like that. That could be a challenge coin coming. Um, it oh, won't let you post the link, huh? That's weird. I haven't even seen it pop up as like a message to approve. So you know what? I think Trev might have to be the one to post it because he's a he's a moderator. So if you can try, maybe send him like a personal message to Trev Wilson on Facebook or something. Turner says sipping some old tub while enjoying the live stream. Cheers, man. What do you think of that old tub? I'm curious because Jason actually Jason just put out a review of that old tub today. He compared the old one to the new one. And I'll tell you what, I have not tried the new one yet, but, um, you know, that was always, I think it was, I can't remember which one, one of the, one of the big people at Beam, like I, I want to say Booker Beam's daily drinker was Old Tub. Um, so, you know, pretty cool. 100 proof, 23 bucks. Like, it's not much of a gamble. Just go for it. You know, that's what I say. Trev is the mod. The mod amongst men. Mm. Like a $23 Booker's. Huh. That's what Booker's should be priced. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be that low. But it's a $50 bourbon for most of them, in my opinion. Chris Benny, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. Just buried my Whistlepig tenure. Sad but happy. Yep, that's whiskey. You know, you get to enjoy it. Enjoy it with your friends. Enjoy it at home. Um, when it's gone, you you have the memories and hopefully can find another bottle, you know. I feel like the whiskey world is not slowing down yet. And let me know what you think, too. I mean, obviously with COVID, like, our store picks locally have just died. I'm sure that was the case everywhere, but they're starting to come back a little bit now. Um, But the bourbon boom is just stronger than ever. Like, some of these Facebook pages I'm a part of, people are not slowing down. They're buying up everything they can. It's It's not going away. Not going away yet. 
Oh, this smells good. This is some maple. That's nice. That's some serious maple and deep caramel. Hmm. I don't know. Whenever I whenever I describe maple, like when it sticks out that strong, I think of Canadian whiskey for some reason. We all feel that Booker should be sold at twenty three dollars, but <laughs> but barrel proof at twenty three bucks that's nearly unheard of. Closest would be Old Ezra seven, which was thirty five. Yeah, this doesn't have proof. I'm trying to think maple, like maple sometimes could be. Tennessee whiskey, so some of our Jack Daniels store picks. Blame Canada! <laughs> yeah. Or even Dickel. Possibly. I mean, they, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I shouldn't be guessing, you know? Rock gut in the house. How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Happy Wednesday. This has got a nice nose, though. Initially, when I pulled that cap off, it is just explosion. Explosion of aromas. I should totally be guessing. Okay. Yeah. I want, make, make a fool of myself, right? Yeah. There's some proof there. That's wonderful. Hmm. That's wonderful. It's got, um, oh man, that's older for sure. Maybe it's because I'm comparing it right to two. It's definitely got some more age. Um, uh, nice flavor though. Nice mouthfeel. Pretty decent proof. Like I'd say 10, like maybe 110. 105 to 110. Yeah. Careful. A little bit of almost nuttiness there too, but that maple on the nose is for some reason just sticking with me. You're good, Ryan. We're gonna we're gonna go through these again. So if you know if we miss not getting it up for the first time through, we can always hit it on the way back. Ed, I saw on um, Discord something happened, but I couldn't find the origin of what happened. I hope everything's all right, man. Um, I didn't I didn't see that I didn't see what happened. So I hope hope you're doing all right. I really like the nose on this one. This is an early favorite for me. Mm. It's got a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor. Really like that. Mm -hmm. Might even write a note on that one. Lot of flavor. My expert opinion. Um, get some more water here. All right. All right, let's go to number four here. Hmm. Compared to three, this is, again is more grainy for me. Grain forward. It's always tough to judge on the first couple noses after taking a whiskey cap off, though, because sometimes it locks in those, that ethanol burn, you know? Again, not a bad nose at all. Not a bad nose at all. I think he did send some good whiskeys here. But I'm curious to know if these are store picks or just normal things maybe I haven't had yet. Ugh! Blind tastings are difficult. Whew. Getting some bride punch on the nose on that one again. Think of my nose water. Nick, how you doing? Late to the party, but finally here. Cheers, man. Happy Wednesday. Come on in. Have a drink. Have a drink. Oh, that's nice on the palate. As ADHD would say, swirl that girl. I was actually going to break out my AD, ADHD whiskey tumble glass, but it was for the bone snapper, so I want to make sure I had a glen just to just to try it, you know. 
<laughs> yep, swirl that girl. Swirl that girl. That one doesn't drink is hot though. I think there's rye there, but. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely got some rye. Definitely got some rye. I don't know how I feel about that one. Kind of torn on that one. What was the other one I said? One was the other one I said, but a lot of rye. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. A lot of rye, a lot of proof. Um, normally when someone sends a flight, they'll start at like 80 proof and work up to something really hot. I feel like he started out really hot. Well, maybe that one wasn't as bad. Maybe my nose just had to get burned to figure it out. Mmm. Woo! So what's new? What's new in everyone's life, huh? Let me know. Um, work. Work is work. You know, we're still trucking on, still going, doing what we're doing. Uh, the wife and I just put an offer in on a piece of property around here, actually. It's probably like 10 minutes from our house now, but it has a big barn on it and um, 30 acres. So it's got building potential eventually. It's got uh, a huge like barn with 18 horse stables in it already. So we could, um, you know, there's potential with stuff we want to do. So I don't know, we could get, we could piece off a piece of that land and maybe get it commercially okayed to do some something with whiskey related maybe. I mean, I, I don't know, it's just me thinking out loud, but uh, we'll see. Trev, thank you. Um, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Trev, for posting that. So here's the here's the key, everyone, in chat. Click that key. You can see what we're drinking, one through five. So first one to five. And when we go back down, you'll, you'll know. Did I just do four? I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. In FedEx hell. Oh, pandemic's killing my delivery. Yeah, I can imagine. Um... Tim, it's just been, I get an email like every day from FedEx just saying, oh, delayed, De you know, we're going through delays with everything going on and it's, it's endless, you know, everything's back, even like just Amazon, like they can't even guarantee their prime anymore, which is crazy for them. So, you know, it's fine. We're making do, we're making it work. <sighs> I like the nose on this too. This has got a nice balanced nose. No huge wow for the key. All right, now he's now now you're making me think here, okay? I, this is why I can't I can't reach chat. I can't reach chat. Wow for the key. All right, that this could be this could be anything. You guys are killing me. This this smells really good though. This smells really good. This is not. This is not. Um, blowing my nose up with proof like some of the other ones did. But it smells nice. This has got a really nice nose. I'm telling you, this is, this is a nice balanced nose. I'm, it's inviting. It's just an inviting nose. Mmm. Mmm. I've tried that before. That's, that's Willet. That tastes like a Willet profile. I'm getting that cherry licorice note I get in Willet. That's got to be a Willet product, but I don't know what, what it could be. Um, it's not like Noah's Mill. Noah's Mill is a lot more like creamy peanut butter. This is like, it, it tastes like Willet. Like someone confirmed, or maybe don't, I don't know. But I'm, I'm initially on first sip, like that tastes like Willet. It's got to be bourbon too. That doesn't taste like, that doesn't taste like rye. That's got to be bourbon. It's reminding me of Johnny Drum. Um, Johnny Drum's the one I'm probably most going to towards for that. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Tim, I'm not confirming shit, Ryan said. <laughs> I know you're not. I know. Initially, though, that's like, that's got to be. It's got to be. Um... Tim says I gotta get some of those bourbon sane glasses for the house. Hey, thanks, man. Um, they're they're awesome, actually. 
I love these things. Um, bourbonsane.com, you can get them along with these challenge coins. We got probably about 20, 25 challenge coins left. So we're getting low on these. And once these get down to like about 10 left, we'll go ahead and order round four. Got to think of something we're going to do for round four. Whoa, a BTAC flight, Daniel Brown says. <laughs> Except it's all mezcal. <laughs> no, I'm not getting tequila notes on these. I am not. Could this could this be a purple top? I have such limited experience with purple tops. Like, I think I've had one purple top, but but I did a tour at a VIP tour at Willet Distillery, and we tried, honest to God, probably fifteen barrels. Like with Drew, the master distiller, he was the one leading the tour. He was dr literally drilling barrels at Willet, and he was drilling them. He'd take our glass, fill our glass, like three quarters of the way full. And he's like, do not drink all this, throw it out, like throw it out, have a couple sips, throw it out. We're going to be here for two and a half hours. Like don't feel bad about wasting whiskey. I mean, they got 30,000 barrels, so, or more, I don't know. But those are the vibes I'm getting, man. Those are the vibes I'm getting. All five of the same bottle. <laughs> that, that would be a true test. And that would mess with your mind so much. We'll have to do that in a flight sometime. I'll send that to someone. No problem, Chris. That is strong Willet. Strong Willet. Um, definitely, definitely cast rank. So that tells me it's a purple top, but the age. I don't think it's one of the like super old, like 10 year ones. I'm guessing it's probably a five or six year Willet. That's my guess. Five or six year Willet. Maybe it's just a Willet product. Like maybe it's just a Willet product. Like it's just Rowan's, <laughs> Rowan's Creek or I don't know. He, I don't think he would have sent me that though. I don't think he would have sent me that because you know I have that stuff. Or you would assume I, I would have it at least. So, but purple tops, I, I don't have. That's for sure. That is damn good though. That's good. That's good, man. Oh. That's good. If you can ever find, I don't know, like I'm probably totally off, okay? So like, just know that. But if you can find a Willet Purple Top, in my limited experience with them, it's just phenomenal stuff. So, um, it's an awesome flight. You're blessed to be a part of it. <laughs> ah, I know, Ryan, Ryan's the man. Like, Ryan's the man. So, we've been talking a lot back and forth and stuff, so. We're gonna do this. I, I I can't guarantee I'm gonna guess any anything else. You know, I haven't I haven't tried everything. Like I, there's a lot I have not tried yet in this world of whiskey. <sighs> this one smells just nice, though. This also smells so nice. I wouldn't ever send you something I don't personally love. That's fair. That's fair. That's very kind of you. You know. I will happily accept everything you love and don't love. You know, because maybe I'll love it. I'm getting rye kick on that, man. There. Mm. It is um delicious. It's still delicious, like, but I'm getting rye. Second hint, there's no dickle juice in this. Okay, that's good to know because that narrows some stuff out, but... The only one I would have thought that was the one I got that heavy maple on. You know, I got heavy maple, but it was still a bourbon. I don't, it was not like Canadian whiskey. Um, thank goodness there's no dickle because you don't like you don't like dickle apparently. So, <laughs> um, but I don't either. So you know my palate. <sighs> uh, that smells good. What was the first hint, by the way? 
Did you give me a first hint? Just that, just that you uh, wouldn't send me something you don't like. Hmm. Oh man, um, I can't identify what that whiskey is. I don't think I've had that one. You know, that is not sticking out to me for what I think that might be. Good. I mean, really, really good again. All right, that was the first hint. All right, I was just fishing for another hint, buddy. Just, just fishing for another hint. Okay, this smells familiar. Definite age, like 12 years plus. This this definitely smells. <laughs> this definitely smells. This is sweet, creamy oak. They're all hot. That explains the sweating, Ryan. Thank you. This could be a Knob Creek pick. Um, three could be a Knob Creek pick, because I'm getting at least 10 years, I'm thinking. It doesn't smell that hot, though, compared to, I think, the higher rye ones. I think that's what it is, the rye that's throwing me off. It's got a nice creamy oak, though. Richie Z in the house. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Happy, happy Whiskey Wednesday. I think that could be, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, I think that could be a Knob Creek pick, I do, I'm going to stick by that for now, we'll revisit, we'll revisit, but I, I think that could be, um, it doesn't taste like a Knob Creek pick I've had personally, but it's given me this similar flavor, I'm not getting as much nuttiness. Like, I'm not getting a huge amount of nuttiness, which I usually get in Knob Creek Picks. It usually sticks out. It's kind of a giveaway. But it's got that dusty, older quality that kind of reminds me. And the nose kind of reminded me, too. This, this could be a Russell's, too. Could be a Russell's pick, too. Because it's got slight nuttiness, but the proof. The thing about wild turkey, sidebar, um, they use, like, they have so many different warehouses they use. And I've had picks from probably like five, four or five different warehouses, whatever. A couple of camp a couple not. Like, and it, they, it's so different. Um, Edward Fulmer, how you doing? Thanks for coming in, man. Just got the rare breed. Nice. You will. You will. It's delicious. Rare breed is wonderful. You'll you'll really enjoy it. Um, sorry, I was gonna, I was saying flavor profile is so different. It is like store pick to store pick. You can get Russell's picks that are complete ends of the spectrum, and you have no idea you're drinking a, a Russell's pick. Camp Nelson gives you completely different qualities than some of just the normal warehouses they use. So I don't know. Z man, how you doing? Good to see you. Edward, yeah, um, he says he enjoyed the Russell Reserve but thought the finish was a little underwhelming, hoping it hits harder with more complexity overall. Um, I find more complexity in Russell's picks usually, but it depends on the pick. You know, you could have just got an off pick or a weird single barrel. It happens. You know, it happens. This is, I don't know. This, this like, again, smells older. I can't put my, I can't put my seal stamp of approval on Knob Creek though. I don't, I don't know if it is. I really don't. I really don't. I don't, I don't know. Okay, that's cinnamon. Huge cinnamon on that. Um, This is not reminding me as much of like a cinnamon hot tamale though. It's more... Like ground cinnamon, I think. You know, like ground cinnamon, fresh cinnamon. Fresh cinnamon, it's cinnamon you get out of it, like you put on your oatmeal. You know, like... That nose is way nicer than the first time through, though. First time through, I was getting youthfulness. The farminess, I think, was this one. 
it's still there a little bit. Like, I'm not getting a huge amount of age, but that cinnamon note. What is that? All right, there's a lot of fruitiness in there, too. Um, like, sweetness fruitiness. I'm getting hints of juicy fruit gum now. Juicy fruit gum. I've gotten that before in... Uh, what? Buffalo Trace? Specifically... Mash Bill 2 Buffalo Trace, but I'm not getting huge Buffalo Trace vibes. I'm not getting huge Buffalo Trace. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. Josh Anderson, how you doing? I, I know. Just what I described there, it, it does seem like an E.H. Taylor. <sighs> Proof seems about right, honestly. It could be a Blanton's pick. could be a E.H. Taylor single barrel. Because this has more depth and complexity than a E.H. Taylor small batch would. But I'm still getting a little bit of like, like that farminess. Farmy and a little bit of youth. A little bit of youth. Just a little bit. Mmm. That's got some heat though. Yeah, a lot more heat on the palate. Woo! Holy crap. Ugh, wow. Um, that could be, I, I don't know. It's still got immense sweetness, though, like a lot of sweetness, a lot of vanilla, but that's got heat. There's no way that's Blanton's. I don't, the only thing that hot would be Blanton's straight from the barrel, but that's, I get a lot more like Snickers chocolate qualities. That tastes more youthful to me than that. What is something that fruity? You see the struggle I go through? Like when I'm, imagine me filming in front of a camera doing this, like off camera. This is what happens. I just sit here and I'm like thinking in my head, not talking out loud, but just thinking in my head like oh, when I'm doing these blinds, you know? Ah. Who said whiskey work was easy? Huh? No one! Jeez. Oh. So my last video, which was actually my finals for the Battle of the Bourbons, um, I had a whole bunch of comments on, on the video that said, hey, that shelf behind you is sagging. I flipped, I took everything off, flipped it over. So it's fine now, but it was completely like drooping down. So I bought, um, reinforcements. I've got actually a couple shelves, one, two, three, four, five, I have it four, um, to hold these up because I, my bottom shelves specifically are loaded with whiskey. Like I'm, you should see what's behind here. Like, it's just bottles of whiskey. I'm, I've run out of shelf space, you know. That's another good thing about the barn. You know, extra, I can put my backup bottles there. Make it happen. I don't know, guys. I don't know. This is, this is, this is tough. No, there's, I don't know, there might be, now that I'm trying that again, there might be a lot of age on that. Like when it hits the front of the palate, it's reminding me of older whiskey, but as the finish settles in, it's kind of reminding me of more youthful whiskey. Huh. That is a very interesting pour. I'm really curious to see what that is because that's confusing me right now. I don't know if that's old or young now. I, I really thought it was young the whole time, but now... Going back through, I actually really, really like that one. I'm going to have to try to put these in order. I'm going to have to go back through them and try them all again. Mm -hmm. We may go back through a third time, if you don't mind. All right. Let's go back to number one here. Oh, that smells nice. That smells really nice. That's got a little maple in it, too, actually. That's got some maple quality. But that's like, that's rich creaminess. It's like, it's like maple whipped cream is what that smells like. Is that a thing? Infused maple with whipped cream? Ryan, $5 super chat. Thank you, brother. He says, thanks for being a good sport with this. I know I enjoy watching. Hopefully others do too. Good sport. 
bro, you, you hooked me up, man. Um, are you kidding me? Like, I, I love this. This is what I love. When I have to miss, like, Wednesday live streams, it makes me sad because I love hanging out, love chatting. I mean, blinds are incredible. I love doing blinds. I may look like an idiot, but that's fine. I don't care. I'm no professional, you know? I'm just one, one of you just drinking. But thank you. Thank you so much for giving these samples because these are not bad whiskeys. These are all good whiskeys. And if I describe anything bad, it's nitpicking at a minimum, at best. Something. <laughs> Drink all night, all night for what I care. <laughs> Turner says, I better hurt like hell when you hit your thumb. Yes, this is the same freaking black bruise I have had for good look like a month now it's been a month I've had this um I'm I'm at the point where I'm like looking at my drill in the garage and I'm like do I just drill the damn thing or take a needle to it you know we got a sewing needle like just pop it like will blood come out or will it just be all dry and crusted under there I don't know I don't know Jason's not going live tonight no um he he is in New York so he is not going to be going live so we can hang out a little bit longer, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's for Mrs. Bourbon saying, kinky with the black nail polish. Just the one. But she does good work. <laughs> oh, man. New York, New York. Mm. That's really freaking good, too. That is really freaking good too. Holy cow. Bro, you you hooked it up. I think Ryan really hooked it up, honestly, because that is delicious. Whew. Man. Um Edward asks, out of the thirty to forty dollar range of Willet bourbons, what would you say is comparable to Knob Creek flavor profile? Knob Creek okay, um Johnny Drum, Pure Kentucky, Kentucky Vintage. Um, close to Knob Creek, probably, I mean, none of them are that close to Knob Creek, honestly. But if you're looking proof-wise, I would say go with the Pure Kentucky or Johnny Drum. Those are the my two favorite, like, sweet spots with Willet. If you can't get to the high-end stuff, go with Johnny Drum or Pure Kentucky. I think those are going to be your best bets, so. Brian with the $10 Super Chat. Cheers to the Whiskey Tube channels out there. Love the content, all these channels. Thank you, man, so much. Um, we love doing it. You know, that's why we all do it. Um. I, you know, for me personally, like with everything going on, like buying the property, family, um, my son just had his third birthday two days ago, three days ago. So um, it's been a really, really crazy busy time in my life. So I've only been doing one episode a week and that's probably going to continue from here on out because I know once we get this property, I'm going to be spending all my nights there. So I'll, I'll still be doing live streams Wednesday um, and then one episode a week, whether it be Tuesdays or Saturdays, I'm not sure yet. If I get time for two episodes, there'll be some weeks where I do two episodes, but it's just going to depend. So, but it's, we love doing it, man. That's the only reason we do it. You know, we love hanging out. We love chatting. We love the community. That's for me, at least my favorite part is the community. So it really is. Patrick Fulmer also came with $5 Chupa Chat. Chupa Chat. $5 Chupa Chat. I love the creamy rye. Airtime after opening up is great for rye. Yeah. I'm going to go down one more time and I'm going to leave the caps off this time. So Hopefully, I'll let everything open up a little bit more, you know? Patrick, I'm curious. What is, like, so when you say a creamy rye, I, when I hear that, I think, like, a Four Roses pick that has a lot of creaminess, but Four Roses is still 35% rye with their picks, some of them, you know? Um, you mean an actual rye whiskey that's creamy, so you're talking aged. You know, usually that creaminess for me, that creamy oat comes out when stuff's more well-aged, so... That could very well be, uh, I was going to say an OWA pick, but I'm not sure I get the Buffalo Trace profile as much in there, you know. Really good though, really freaking good. I don't know how I'm going to choose these, man. Knob Creek Cast Drink Rye, yes, which is a nine-year rye. Um, That's... You haven't opened that yet, Edward? You should pop that open right now and give that a try. I'm curious if you get any kind of like a musty oak note on that. 
Not saying I do. Just just curious if you get it. Christopher David, you have no idea. I already I already emailed MGP about that actually. I was like, how much is it to buy, you know, buy a barrel of whiskey? Not as bad as you think, really. Um I told him my thoughts of what I wanted to do. And um nineteen hundred bucks a barrel. That's not terrible at all for three year, I think it is, three year whiskey in either mash bills. Give me 10 of them. Give me 10 of them. I'll blend my own. You guys can all have, you know, have a bottle. <laughs> That's, that'd be incredible. I wouldn't release it now, of course, but I just have to get the property sectioned off. Like, give me one acre. Give me one acre, and I don't even need to do a, I don't need to do a tasting room. I just need it to be okay to have a blending company. You know, give me a blending company. That's all I need. That's the dream. That's the dream, folks. Buddy, I'm live streaming. Go back upstairs. I'll be up in a little bit. My son's at the door. I locked it. I learned my lesson. <laughs> Go on upstairs, bud. I'll be up in a little bit. He's going to start banging on the door very soon, I'm sure. So just be ready for that. I definitely think I like one to two better. Um, one gives me more age. I'm still getting, I, I think it's, I think it's younger. You know, I don't, it's not young, young, I don't think, but I think it's younger. Could be like a new riff. No, not a new riff I've had at least. Like a, but that age maybe. What could that be? Peerless bourbon maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's so tough. So tough. So tough. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I'll tell you what, the more I drink, the better these get. <laughs> that helps. I think that helps. Mmm. Mmm. I gotta order these. I should order these as I go because I'm not gonna remember otherwise. Yeah, Tim. Um, oh, sorry. I think you're talking about something else. I thought you were talking about MGP. Because MGP has a sample program, too, about that, too. Yeah, I like that a little more. That, that's got some heat, though. Whew, baby! Jeffrey Wax says... My five and seven year old run around saying they want to be a YouTuber. Does your kid realize what it means to say you're live streaming? No, he doesn't. He just turned three. He has no clue. I tell him, uh, Daddy's got to go do his burp. He's got to go drink some bourbon. That's what I say. Going to drink your bourbon, Daddy? Drink your bourbon, Daddy? That's what he says. I say, Yep. Sometimes I let him come pick out a bottle for me, you know, and he gets, picks a bottle. Every single night, or every single night, not every night. No, I don't drink every night, but every time he comes and picks a bottle, this is what he picks. Every time, every time he chooses a bottle, and I'm like, you know what? Why don't we choose a different bottle for Daddy tonight? You know, let's choose something different. He's obsessed with this bottle for some reason. You know, he's he's already on the freaking Buffalo Trace bandwagon. Only three years old. Ridiculous, ridiculous. ADHD whiskey in the house. How you doing, Matt? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well, man. Um, I was just saying I was going to break out your tumbler glass for the beginning of the stream, your your little spinny. I don't know, what, you, what, you, what do you call that thing, the tumble tumble glass? Brandon Knight, good to see you. Uh, Josh Anderson says you should do a pre-order for patrons and viewers for a bourbon stain barrel pick of your Knob Creek or Elijah Craig. I saw that Sazerac Rye is doing a pick now too. Absolutely, man. Um, if I ever get the opportunity to pick at a store, like at a store, like I have a couple stores that I would be doing picks with. I told them like, hey... If you, if I'm able to be a part of this pick, like I already have at least 20 bottles lined up that I can sell for you to patrons or viewers. Like just, I just want to be able to pick, like I just want to be able to help pick it, you know? So that's the goal. I'm really hoping I'm, I'm really trying to have him talk to his brown form to rep because I want to get an old Forester barrel proof pick. If we can get that. That's going to be phenomenal. The wobble glass. Of course. I'm an idiot. Of course. You say it all the time too. Wobble glass. Jake Miller, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Thrasher, how you doing? 
You're not late. You're just on time, brother. Just on time. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan says, if you ever do a pick, I'm in for three bottles easily. Well, that's what I figured. Like me personally, I'll, if I do a pick of my own thing, like if I do my own pick, I'm buying a case at least for me, you know, and then of course patrons will get first dibs and like it, it just, it goes on and on. So I think the interest would be there. You know, I think people would be wanting to get, it, especially if it's a good, a good type of pick, you know, even Buffalo Trace picks. Like I, I, that's my daily drinkers, Buffalo Trace picks. I think I would buy a Buffalo Trace. It's $30 and then 15 for shipping. 45 bucks for a good Buffalo Trace pick. You know, I, it's more about community. You can try it. Tell me what you think of it. That's how I feel about it. Cletus is in. He's in. Exactly. I think I skipped three. <laughs> Jay Armstrong. I'd buy one just for the F of it. Why not? <laughs> yep. Thanks, ma'am. There's going to be enough to go around. Usually, you know, I've got, um, he's talking about doing a Woodenville pick with a local bourbon group, but I was like, cast strength Woodenville, um, pretty good. I mean, it's, it's good. Like, I think you guys would like that too. He sells everything at state minimum too, which is great. So 70 bucks is what that would be. But it's like four to five years, depending on, you just got to stick a nut. We'll put a nice sticker on it for you though. Don't you worry. We'll put a nice sticker on it. Brian's in for a pick. I know. I feel like it's just, you know, it'd just be fun. Just for me to be a part of a pick would be incredible. Go do my own pick eventually. That's the end goal. I think my my ultimate pick I'd like to do is Russell's. Like, go to Wild Turkey and do a Russell's pick with Eddie Russell. Like, everyone who talks about that says it's just wonderful. So, I think I'd really like to do that. Someday. Someday, maybe. All right, Turner's heading out to bed. Hey, good night, man. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, great hanging out, great chatting. Hope you're here next time. Brian, honestly, if I if I can, it will happen. I'm happy to. I am happy to. Let's go to three. Because I put one into an order, but... Boy, that's good, too. I think I like four. Mm. Thoughts on old elk? Passed on it, but I really want that freaking elk head. Poor spout. <laughs> I have not, you know what? I don't think I've ever had old elk. I may have tried it one time at a bar. Z Man's in too. Thanks, man. Steam face, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, I don't think I've ever had old elk. Maybe one time at a bar, but I would have been long gone before I remember what that tasted like. So I, I, I haven't. It'd be cool if you could do a 1920 store pick. Oh, uh, if that would happen sometime, that would be a lot of fun. But the closest you're going to get are either the barrel proof or the hunter proof picks now. That's 115 proof store pick when they have the other two strengths that I don't see it happening would be nice though I mean I love old Forrester as it is so single barrel picks would be I'm sure wonderful but you move up and prove a little bit you got your you know your barrel proof picks and then you just add a little water or an ice cube to it pretty much got your 1920 right there oh yes Russell's would be I know I know oh Richie you're right man Camp Nelson Camp Nelson, Russell's pick, and slap slap like a beautiful label on it with my face. Picture my like sweaty head going on there. Look at this. I got my own hair gel now. Look at that. Like it? My wife's going to kill me. She, my wife was like, you need to gel your hair before you go on live stream. You want to be presentable. You want people to follow you. You want people to subscribe to you. Gel your freaking hair. I was like... No one cares. No, my, my hair is at that awkward length. It's like long, disgusting. And she's just, you know, she wasn't having it. She wasn't having it, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Mike M, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming in, man. Um, I just saw someone else too. What was it? Oh, Scottish bourbon. Hey, 
you don't ever have to apologize for being late, man. If you're here at all, thank you for the support. Thank you for coming in. Pour yourself a drink. Okay, D-Psycho, take it easy. Take it easy, D-Psycho. My hair is fine. D-Psycho is my mother, so I can talk as much crap about to her as I want because she's been telling me to do my hair for years, and I think it's just fine. It looks beautiful. Feathered and lethal. Excellent, Scottish. This is delicious. Mmm. How high do I move that up, honestly, is the question. I think I really like that. I think I really like that. All right, I think I'm going to leave it like that. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that. All right, let's find out our result. Doing good on time. Uh, all right, so he, he, Ryan said he even put notes in here. So I'm not really going to take guesses, I don't think, on... I mean, I can try. I can try to take guesses if you really want me to. Might be way wrong, but keep in mind now I've been drinking most likely cast strength bourbon and whiskey. Um, but so I don't don't judge me too hard if I do terrible on this. And I started with a cast strength rye, so keep in mind I've been drinking a lot before I I guess these. So Ryan says I nailed two of them. That's good. One of them's got to be the Willet, right? I mean, all right. Let's see. Uh, let's go with my order here. So I'll start with my least favorite, and I'll work my way up. Uh, sample number two was my least favorite. No way. I was just talking about that. Woodenville single barrel. So that's, isn't, wasn't two the one I said reminded me of Woodenville? And I was saying how the cast strength's pretty good. It's actually good. Like, I got the youthfulness. That's what gave it away was that slight bit of, like, sawdust note. But... Not bad, man. Ugh. I, I, like, it's worth, I, I'd probably pay the, six, like, 60 bucks, 65 bucks for that. Not bad, man. Hmm. That's wooden, though. Like, you have to, if you've had the regular pot still, you know that's wooden, though. That's good, though. That's good. All right, um, my... Fourth choice was sample, I can't read my writing, I think it's a four. No way, Bell Mead Cast Strength Cognac Finish. I have a bottle of this, not not this exact bottle. Um, now this, okay, he wrote actually wrote, wrote a note here. Bourbon Enthusiast, um, he's a member there, Single, single Barrel Club. He does good picks, um, but that's where this was picked from. So this was a Bourbon Enthusiast picked Bell Mead cast strength. I think, honestly, I think the cognac, that's the spice that came through. Yeah, cast strength for 65. That's not terrible, though. Like, I think it's worth that price. I would pay 65 for that. That's a nice sip in bourbon, especially, like, on a little hot day, add a, add a cube to it. This has got spice, and that's the cognac coming through. You know, it's got that almost, like, fruity, f spicy fruitiness that comes through. You're not getting the cat. No, here state minimum is sixty nine dollars for the cast strength. Sixty nine dollars for the cast strength because that's the price state minimum that he was going to sell that single barrel for. That's delicious. Single barrel I have with that. I don't know where it is. Also phenomenal. Nope, that's the regular cast strength. But Bell Mead, another MGP product, cognac finish. It's just a sweet spot in their single barrel offerings. I'm not a huge port guy. I think cognac finish is something I really enjoy. I think it's really, really good. These crazy Nas didn't steal these barrels. <laughs> yeah, honestly. For those of you that don't know that story, um, go look up Crazy Nas and Bourbon Enthusiast. It's wacky and crazy. This is where things got tough. So 
I don't know how I can put will it like from what I think it is will it um, this low but this flight was delicious so let's see sample five I think that says will it six year wow okay I nailed that I said five or six years I think um, not bad for only trying one purple top before um, but that's classic will it man that that cherry delicious licorice note came through man and it's that's good stuff purple tops non-existent in michigan i don't even know if they show up here honestly i don't know at all i don't know where you got that but good find and that's a phenomenal whiskey i mean will it they're overpriced on secondary if you can get it at retail every freaking time man every freaking time Mm. It's high rye too, he says. Um, it's in the notes, okay. Um I can't um I don't know that I can see this. <laughs> can I see this? Greer! Thank you so much, man. Great tasting as usual. Thank you so much. Oh, the steakhouse one. Howie Steakhouse, very nice high-end steakhouse. They located was Falling off on hard is the first time I've heard them selling off their own barrel picks, but that's what they've done. Really like their Knob Creek pick, not as much as the one I sent him, but um, this is their Willet pick. So that awesome, man. So a steakhouse did a Willet pick. That, that's great. I think that's great. And it's wonderful. Like, that's awesome. That's really, really good stuff. All right, number two, second favorite. Sample three. Knob Creek single barrel pick. Now, was this the one I said was a Knob Creek pick or not? <laughs> Mike, <laughs> I don't know about that. Looks like Chris is ready for Jason or Klein. Um, they're both like hammer down. You know, they're 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 legends at their craft. They are, man. They really are. Wise guy, whiskey guy. How you doing, man? Happy Wednesday. Thanks for coming in. Um, yeah, I did. Okay, so I did say this was a Knob Creek pick. It, it gives me those properties, but, you know, it, it, I think the nuttiness fell off in this pick because of the age. Now, he put in here that this is a 14-year Knob Creek pick. 14-year. So, I really think, I think that nuttiness that I was getting before just, it, it fell off a little bit. Like, it's still there. It's just a little bit more mellow. Chris Benny, thank you, brother. Thank you. You won't regret it. Those Challenge Coin 3s, the Bourbon Saint Asylum, I like them. I like the way they turn out. Locked in the Bourbon Saint Asylum. There could be worse places to be. Trev Wilson says, Chris, you have to face me so you can get a win under your belt. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I just don't have that clutch gene. You know, some people have that clutch gene. Klein's got that clutch gene. He pulls it through every time. Me, I think I just, I fold under pressure. You know, I think that's what it is. I don't know. No, I... The one I did against Klein was a lot of fun. Like, it was honestly pretty close. Um, it depends on the flight, though. Like, coming from the Bourbon Junkies, you're talking like 500 whiskeys it could be. And most, like, everything but two of those, I think, in the flight I hadn't had before. And I called a couple of them, like, what they were. Like, one was a Canadian whiskey, that kind of stuff. So, it just, it depends. You know, I've had Knob Creek picks, so I was able to identify that. Will it stands out for me? Um, but I very well could have been wrong on that. Like, it's just, it's what it is. It's what it is. Arc wonderful. I am a sucker for a good Knob Creek pick. I really am. That is a good Knob Creek pick. There is a Willet in my house, says D. Willet. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! If that's the only way you can get, that's fine. That's fine. All right, let's find out what our number one was. Number one was number one. <sighs> and this is a whiskey I've had before. Bardstown Discovery Series, number one. Now, I had a sample that sent to me from Bardstown. Um, and it was definitely good. Like, at the time, it was the best I think I tried that night. But I don't remember it being, like, blow me out of the water good. But that's why blind, it tells you what you really like, you know. Andrew Buchanan says he's not a fan of Willet personally. And there you go. Like, that's the thing. That's why there's, 
how many 30,000 craft distill like distilleries and craft distilleries now there's something for everyone out there you know if you i bet you you're a huge fan of either buffalo trace wild turkey knob creek or jim beam you know i bet one of those you know so that's why i have the choke gene patrick said <laughs> yeah bardstown um yeah he put in here it's not a store pick but it's um a hella good whiskey in my opinion had to include it and you're right man you put in every one of these whiskeys the lowest proof was 115 highest proof was 127 at that willet that that's scorching man that's scorching and th this was really good um I, I don't remember the specifics on this i'd have to grab the small sample bottle which might be gone now but i think it's a blend of like Older whiskey and younger whiskey. Some of it sourced from Wild Turkey. Whiskey Central says, got to head out. Hey, thanks so much. Thanks so much for coming in. Everyone go check out Whiskey Central if you haven't already. Great channel. Up and coming channel. Um, The thing about any blind, and let me just say this now. And I know I'm at the point where I'm just rambling because I've been drinking. But I think it depends on what you've eaten previous in the day. The order you try these in, like it all makes a difference. Like some stuff you try back to back, you have notes stick out big time as opposed to the last time, you know, like that will it note stuck out huge at cherry licorice was a polar opposite from the one before it. You know, I think the order you try stuff in the day, your mood, I think that that can make a difference in what you're in the mood for, you know. He, um, let me just say too. Can I grab that? Where where did I put that? Oh, I don't know where I put it. Um, Ryan was also kind enough to send me the Knob Creek 12 year. I don't know where I put it, man. I, I don't want to go searching. You know what? Let me go look for it. I want to try it here because I tried it one time in a blind, which was not this. Sorry. Just a second. Hold. Hold tight. I'll be back. Right here. Right behind me, I didn't even have to move. Man, thighs coming up. I'm gonna try this Knob Creek 12 year. Um, Cause he put his thoughts in here and I want to see, you know, how I think it compares. Let me put a little water in here. We've got all night, Bryant. I know, I know. I gotta slow down the drinking sometime though because I do have to work tomorrow. Believe it or not, I do have to work tomorrow. Headed to Kentucky tomorrow. Hoping to get to Jim Beam on Friday. Nice, man. Hugh, um, the distilleries are opening back up now. Like, get to it, man. Hit them up. If you go to Jim Beam, um, I think it's Four Roses is pretty close. That's not right. Maker's Mark. <sighs> I did the whole tour. Like, I can't remember. Um, I know. Work schmirk. I know. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I think it's Maker's Mark. And Maker's Mark has some beautiful grounds. Beautiful grounds. All right, let me pour a little bit of this. So this is the new... Oh, you filled to the brim. Four ounce sample. What a, what a man. What a man. What a man. What a man. What a mighty good man. What a man. Eek. Okay. Old Forest is so close. Downtown? Yeah. It's possible. It's possible. Will it's beautiful as well. It really is. Heaven Hill, you gotta go for the gift shop. Barton, very underwhelmed with Barton. I didn't even do a tour, but it was also raining that day. Gift shop was awful. They had they had old old Bardstown. That's not right. They had um very old Barton, like the lowest one, whatever it is. That is a big pour. You're right, Chris. That's a big pour. Um, they had the lowest proof one. 80, 80, 86. And they had one other product that wasn't even any any of their good stuff. Like 1792 small batch. Only other thing they had. So disappointed with Barton. <sighs> Legit whiskey reviews. How you doing? Thanks for coming in. All right, so Knob Creek 12, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let, let's have a conversation. So I didn't put a review out of this, of this yet, because I wanted to wait to pour this until I was on live stream with, with Ryan here. So 
Um, like I said, I didn't know I was going to get this in a blind, but Christopher David actually sent me this in a blind. And it fared pretty high. Like blind, it fared pretty high, honestly. Um, my concern when they do this, and this goes for the 12 year and the 15 year. Now keep in mind, Knob Creek has single barrel picks that go from nine years up to 15 years. They do. So I really think, oh, I shouldn't say I think. What I'm worried about is that they're gonna be using, for these special release 12 year, 15 year labels, they're using what's left over of the barrels. So a lot of those barrels get eaten up by the Knob Creek nine year single barrel reserve label and then not proof down or the single barrel program, pick program. They stopped one, six months, six months of Knob Creek single barrel program picks. You know, you heard it was going away. Then all of a sudden it was coming back. Then they released the 12 year and the 15 year label. So are they using, like, do they just have a whole, I mean, I, I toured Jim Beam. They've got so many Rick houses, so many. Um, they've got a lot of whiskey. I mean, a lot of whiskey. So it's very possible that they have enough whiskey. Like they have enough whiskey. They don't need to hold any back. I don't know. I'm not saying that's what's happening. Maybe, you know, maybe Fred knows choosing some honey barrels and it's that's the good stuff in the 12 and the 15s, but... Let's keep in mind, they're also proofing it down to 100. And those of us that like a little proof, we may take umbrage to that. Severe umbrage. So I get more of this creamy, creamy, richy, desserty oak that comes through. Um, similar to some picks, you know, similar to some of those Knob Creek picks. Jeez. Splash them out of the glass. Um, no problem, Ryan. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Have a good night. John, no, th right now I'm talking about um, the Knob Creek 12-year picks, or Knob Creek 12-year label, the blue label. Um, it, it, is, it is like a nice, rich, creamy, luscious oak. I say luscious, like that's a thing. That's not a thing. But you know what I'm saying, like that, that kind of dusted oak, but I'm not getting that punch i'm not getting that punch I, I want on the nose like it's got a good nose it's it's classic knob creek like the hundred proof it just it, it kind of it just reminds me of knob creek 100 proof somewhere but it, it's just i think at that price point i think i would just prefer a I think I would prefer a single barrel pick. I think I would. The palette though, it's good. I mean, it's a good whiskey. Um, I think because I just did a cast strength flight, I'm getting watery. Like I'm getting a little bit of wateriness, which I don't like, but I'll tell you what, it, it, it's actually a good pal. I don't mind it. I really don't. I, I think I would still at $10 cheaper get the single barrel picks, higher proof, more versatile. You can do what you want with it, but this is not a bad whiskey. I would have no problem drinking this, you know? It's got sweet oak spice meant for easy sipping. Exactly. And it's, you know, they're tailoring to these people that enjoy the Knob Creek 100, like as their daily, daily drinker. You know, hey, this is a Knob Creek 12 year 100. So, you know, whiskey enthusiasts, they, they usually go for the proof. You know, they like the proof. They know what they're getting in a Knob Creek single barrel pick. So we're more likely to buy that because of those reasons, you know? I agree. YL says, I don't see as many Knob Creek picks as I did a year or two ago. I agree with you. Um, you know, the, the shelfy nine year single barrel reserve label is there. It's everywhere. But the picks themselves, I've had one pick in the last two years. One not, yeah, maybe two, maybe two. Um, but I, I wish it was more because they're some of my favorite for the value. You know, they're they're daily drinkers, 120 proof daily drinkers, but they are. They are and they're delicious. Whew. 
I don't know, it's giving me some alcohol burn now after letting it open up. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. It's good. It's, it's pretty good. Richard Walton, hey, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you so much. Hey, I know I'm going long tonight. I understand if you guys got to run. Um, don't feel like you have to stay. We're just hanging out, chatting right now, just wrapping up the stream here soon. So just going to sip this whiskey, talk a little bit, and, you know, tell you our thoughts. So during episodes, I don't really go into specifics on my thoughts on distilleries um, as far as like you know, Knob Creek, how I feel about that. You know, if I'm going to do that, I'll do that on my blog, which is bourbonsane.com. If I do a review of like, say, Knob Creek 12 year, um, I'll go into my thoughts on, you know, is this going to be good for, <laughs> you know, good for Knob Creek, you know, with comparing the nine year to this one, et cetera. So, but, you know, yeah, no stream for Jason tonight. I know I wouldn't be cutting into his time slot normally, but I know, he's in New York, so he's uh, probably visiting some family, having a good time, so. OGD's my, OGD Bonded is my $25 daily. Nice, Wild Turkey 101, both both great options. Usually with Old Granddad, I'll tend to lean for the 114 because I, I that's my go-to cocktail whiskey. You know, I use that in cocktails and neat with, with ice if it's like a hot day. If like if I come down here and I'm like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to drink, there's so many whiskeys. And it's like 90 degrees out. I don't want to go sit on the deck. I'll pour that. You know, I'll just pour that. So. Whew. Whew. Richie Z says, if you tried the Knob Creek Quarter Oak, I just missed getting one. Um, Quarter Oak, no, but wasn't there a, another one? Twice Barreled. Twice Barreled, I tried at a bar one time. Was not impressed at all. I was not impressed at all, so I don't, I don't know. Um, not, a quarter oak maybe will be better. I know they use smaller barrels for that. Have not tried that, though, so, um, you know, I'm curious. Curious to see. I mean, it's still, what, 50 bucks? 50 bucks for the quarter oak? I mean, they pretty much age it normally and then put it in a smaller barrel. So you probably get a little more oak presence. Um, is it still what a hundred proof? I think so. I know my smartwatch keeps going off. I'm sorry. So my son has not been sleeping the last couple nights. So I'm sure my wife's just having a field day trying to get get him to sleep tonight. I appreciate you, honey. I really do. I appreciate you. Twice barreled ride. That's the one I tried, it, and I was not impressed, Chris. I was not. I tried it. Yeah, I tried it at a bar, and it, I just it was lackluster. Like for that price, I was like, nah. No, I'll go with their other stuff. I have not had the Knob Creek 2001. Um, you know, I've heard mixed reviews on that, too. I've had some people say, like, it was really, really good, and then other people say, oh, no, that was terrible. Actually, D.H. Silb was in here all the time, said he is not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. Whew! This is weird. Like I keep, as I randomly go back in to nose this, I get burn. Like I get some proof burn. I don't know. Maybe it was the 25th he was talking about, Brian. I don't know. You might be right. You might, I think it was the 25th he was talking about. He wasn't a fan of. I, uh, I, I don't think I've had that either. There's been stuff where I've been at tastings and like I was many, many drinks in and I can't remember if I, I had it. But no, I, I have not had it and analyzed it at all if I've had it. So I really think, I think I like this. I do. Um, yeah, taste, exactly. Tasting. Why else else? Tasting. No, it's more of a, just drinking at that point is what it was. Um, no, I, I think, 
I think this Knob Creek 100 is a very, what I'll, I'll call it a serviceable whiskey. Like it's very serviceable. You don't want to overanalyze. You just want to have a nice pour. It's not going to fight you nice and easy. This is a really good option. You know, $60, I'll still take Elijah Craig Barrel Proof all day. Without question. I'll still take Jack Daniels Barrel Proof picks. But if you want some with a little age, a little more depth, and not as much proof punch as you'll get in some of the Knob Creek picks, you know, I think it's it's serviceable. It really is. You're definitely right, Richie. That definitely happened. Definitely stung the old nostrils. Whew. Mm. Let's see what Ryan thought about this because he did put his, you know, his thoughts on this. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the 12 year, 12 year knob. Don't read them if you don't want to be swayed. Some people sing its praises like it's next to savior of the world. I don't get that. I proofed it down to 100. I'm picking up citrus notes. Never picked up a knob creek before. Sweetness is really coming through. I don't know. I really just love nuts in my mouth, I guess. His words, not mine. <laughs> I don't get that from the hunter proof. Guess I'm just a proof for you and me both, man. And, and a lot of us here. I still seek out barrel picks and even the regular nine year single barrel instead. You know, that's pretty much exactly what I just said. Honestly, damn near exactly the same of what I just said. I will, I'll take the picks, man. I'll take the picks it's a it's a good decent whiskey, but at sixty dollars, I would I would take Knob Creek one hundred normal nine year label, half the price. Three years less, half the price. Come on, think about it. Bourbon Apprentice, how you doing? Hey, thanks for coming in, man. Uh, we're wrapping up now. Like we're we're wrapping up now. I'm already thirty minutes over. Normally, Jason's well into his live stream by now, but. Edward says if he wants nothing in his mouth. He's reaching for Booker's every day. Every day. Every day. Um, Edward, you know, Booker's does give me a lot of nuttiness for sure. And if you like the proof, go for it. But one of the most like the most nutty forward bourbons are Jim Beam lower proof to me. Like Jim Beam white label repeal batch. Some of the Knob Creek stuff. Like I get a lot, a lot, a lot of that nuttiness, you know. No, we're not, Chris says. <laughs> we're gonna have to. I've been drinking a lot, so we're going to have to uh, soon. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of nuttiness on that. I don't know. A lot of the, the younger Jim Beam stuff I really do. And, and some of the older, I guess. Rather have not pre picks 9, 12, and 15. Yeah. 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 I mean, I can't disagree, you know. it's It's still good. I just think it's a little overpriced. If it was... 45 to 50 bucks, same price as the, the single barrel reserve. I think it's an everyday buy, you know, but they slap an age statement on it make it, you know, give it a fancy label and call it a limited edition and people pick it up. You know, I would pick it up too if it was here right now, but it's not. So mm. Bourbon Apprentice is not like the 15. You know what? I have not tried the 15 yet. Have not tried the 15 yet. Um, I'm guessing it's just, honest, this is my guess. Like, I haven't had the 15, but this is what I'm picturing. So I'm picturing this flavor profile. A little bit more oak, but I bet you, I bet you it turns astringent. Like, we get a little bit of that drying astringent oak. I bet you that's what the 15 year is. That's, and it's 100 bucks. Tell me if I'm wrong. Those of you that have had it, let me know if you've had the 15 year. It's 100 proof. I bet you it starts to dry out the back of the palate. You get that alcohol, ethanol burn on the back of the palate. And I bet you it just disappoints. That's my guess. You know, that's my guess. Let me know if you've had it. Uncle Buck says Granny's Batch. Granny's Batch is... Um, I've not had that one yet. I've not had Granny's Batch. I'm waiting to see what people think. Of the Booker's releases this year, and if they like them, you know, I'll pick them up. I'll pick them up. I will. We're we're still on like the end of 2019 right now, though. That's how far behind we are. <laughs> Honestly, 
Yeah, you got that right, Ryan. You got that right. Wouldn't pay that price for the 15. We can get that. Christopher David says it's way too oak forward. Okay, so it's just overwhelming with oak. Overwhelming. I believe it. I like the 15 a touch better because this finish is more fulfilling, says uh, says Andrew. Nice. Okay. I mean, I'm open to it. You know, I just haven't I haven't even seen it here. Um, if I find it at a decent price, it'll be picked up. But I just think if if it's still 100 proof, I don't I can't see it living up to that price. I cannot see it living up to 100 100 uh, 100 dollars. I just can't. Oh, all right, gang. Let's wrap up. I know I don't want to go either, but we have to. Um, I got to get up and help. I'll put the boys to bed. It's probably that time. So, um, new label Baker. One last thing. New. I just read this comment from Wesley. New label Bakers over Bookers. I think it depends on the batch of the Bookers because some of those Bookers batches are really, really good. The new Bakers label was great for the first third of the bottle. I'm in the second half right now, and I'm not a big fan of it. So I think it depends. You know, it depends. Let me finish this. Hmm. I sure hope not, Hot Buttery Rolls. How you doing? Quick, everyone go subscribe to Hot Buttery Rolls if you haven't. Brand new YouTube channel. Phenomenal. I love the man. I really do. Um, or they're discontinuing the store picks 15s. I hope not. We'll see. You know, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Eric, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, let's wrap up. Um, let me do one quick sip of what's left over. I keep pushing this off like longer. You know, I keep pushing out longer and longer. Let's combine all these and we'll see what it tastes like. Pretty sure one of these is that bone snapper, so. Thanks for getting it, Chris. I appreciate it, man. That's very alcohol forward. Whatever that did. Whatever that did to that whiskey. Mm -mm. Don't mix Ryan's flight. Moral of the story. I guess that bone snapper on it that took over so right forward. Mm. But the finish. That finish is pretty good. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out all night tonight. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday. Finish the rest of the week strong. Um, we got two days till the weekend. Make it with me. Um, thanks for hanging out. You know, um, this, what, Saturday, I'm going to be doing um, Peerless. So Peerless Small Batch Rye and Peerless Bourbon is the plan. So that should be a good time. You know, Peerless was kind enough to send me these small sample bottles. So I'm going to be trying them. I've been skeptical on Peerless in the past, so I'm gonna see if it can redeem itself. You know, this I'm gonna have to find out from them first before I do the episode, whether it's their like older whiskey or if it's still three year. So we'll see. But I had a great night tonight. Thank you all for hanging out. Thanks for coming in. I'll see you all very soon.